Hey YouTube, welcome back to a brand new Animal Crossing New Horizons video. Today we are looking at 5 things you still didn't know were a thing in New Horizons. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. So it's now well over a year since the launch of Animal Crossing New Horizons with the game having now surpassed 32 million copies sold worldwide as of March this year. This huge milestone makes Animal Crossing New Horizons the best selling Switch game for Nintendo during their last financial year which is absolutely incredible. Of course this means the community surrounding the game is continuously growing with thousands of new players jumping into the franchise every single week even now 14 months into the game's life. Plus, with Animal Crossing New Horizons outselling all previous Animal Crossing games combined, this means so many players are experiencing Animal Crossing for the very first time, which is super awesome. Anyway, with this in mind, I thought it'd be fun to go over 5 things you probably didn't know were a thing in New Horizons. Of course, as always, it's impossible to highlight secrets and hidden details that every single player doesn't know since we all play differently, but hopefully even the experienced players will discover something new. So please leave a like if you're excited for the video and let's get to it. Number 1. Villager Nook Phones so as you know the Nook phone is an essential tool in New Horizons and it's pretty much the centre point for completing tasks, managing DIY recipes and of course keeping track of the critters you've caught amongst other things. So it's a pretty important tool for island life. And just as you'd expect every single villager also living on the New Horizons island has their own Nook phone. Now something you may not know is that despite every villager starting with the same default Nook phone cases players do, as you progress through the game villagers will eventually customise their phone cases too just like we can when using customizable phone case kits. It seems every animal has their own favourite design to use too including special characters who also enjoy a customised Nook phone. Anyway it seems that the villager phone case designs are linked to the patterns you unlock at the Able Sisters. As you probably know if you speak to Sable at the Able Sisters every day eventually she'll grow to like you enough and gift you some awesome patterns she's been working on. There's 10 sets each including 20 designs totaling 200 patterns to unlock. It's these patterns that feature on your residence Nook phones so it's entirely possible to have the same Nook phone case as your bestie if you want to. Plus that means somewhere out there one villager is probably rocking the pizza phone case, yum. Anyway I'd like to thank Crossing Channel for sharing this detail, I never knew these were linked to Sable's patterns, he uploaded an excellent video covering this in more detail and taking a closer look at these special character Nook phones so be sure to check it out. Number 2 Rover's Photo now pretty much since the wild world days it's been possible to obtain villager photos from your town or island residence. Obtaining these is almost a side quest in itself as typically they are seen as a reward from your villagers for being best friends with them. In short if you complete tasks for your residence, exchange gifts and attend birthday parties you'll eventually boost your friendship level with your villager enough that they'll gift you their photo. Don't worry if you're best friends with a villager and haven't received their photo yet though the mechanic still has a random variable. Keep being nice to them and you'll get it eventually. Anyway every photo in New Horizons is obtained with a natural wood frame including special characters but can of course be customised to one of 8 unique designs. But something you may not know is that Rover's photo obtained by completing year 2's Mayday Maze features a random frame by default rather than the usual natural wood and this seems to be the only photo in the game that's obtained this way. It's not known right now whether this was intended as a way to show Rover's photo was obtained in a special way or if it's just a bug. Either way, it's a pretty cool detail. Number 3 Lucky Items now ever since the original Animal Crossing has featured some variation of a luck mechanic that brings luck to the player under certain conditions. In most instances the best way to trigger this luck is by placing particular items in your house in a certain way or by using lucky items to boost things like your interior design score. Typically lucky items when placed in your home boost your happy home academy score by 777 points which is pretty awesome. Anyway despite there being a notable lack of the luck mechanic in New Horizons lucky items still exist and will award players with bonus points allowing you to easily boost your happy home academy score. 
Now, many items such as the fish or bug trophies are considered lucky, but something you may not know is that even the villager photos we mentioned earlier are considered lucky and will boost your score all year round, as long as they are still an island resident. Furthermore, unlike those we've already mentioned, some lucky items will only boost your score during particular seasons, which is why you may have noticed your score changing slightly every now and then. A great example of this is the wobbly zipper toy, which is only a lucky item during the spring. Any other time of the year, and it won't boost your score. Do you use lucky items to boost your Happy Home Academy score? Let us know in the comments. Number 4 Dream Escapes now, although originally missing from New Horizons, both Luna and the Dream Suite were finally added in the massive summer update last year and of course introduced the Dream Island mechanic. Essentially, with help from Luna, it's possible to visit Dreams and other players' islands by typing in the Dream address or asking to visit random islands. It's a pretty neat feature, especially if, like me, you need all the inspiration you can get by seeing how creative other islands are. Anyway, given this feature was initially introduced in New Leaf, it's a pretty standard setup. However, there are are a couple of things you may not know. Firstly, thanks to Mr. Rossetti, <coughs> I mean the rescue center, it's possible to teleport back to the resident services from anywhere on the dream island, just like a normal island, which is super useful given how complex and creative islands can be and how easy it can be to get lost. Plus, it's entirely free and unlike your own island doesn't cost a thing. Another thing you may not know is you no longer have to travel back to the resident services in a dream before you can escape and wake up. Thanks to the most recent update, it's now possible to save and exit using the minus button on the controller and leave from wherever you are on the island, which is an extremely useful feature many people don't know about. Number 5 Clouds now, we've discussed clouds recently in a previous video, but this seemed to invite more questions than answers. Like many weather phenomena in Animal Crossing, a variety of special clouds can often be spotted in the skies of the New Horizons Island. However, something you may not know is there are six variations, most of which can only be seen at certain times of the year. Now, with the exception of the plane trails, which aren't really clouds, the other five types of clouds spawn in certain seasons. Thin clouds can often be spotted during the spring in both hemispheres, during sunny and clear hours. Cumulonimbus clouds can often be spotted during the summer during sunny days, on a day before the island will likely see bad weather. These types of clouds are mostly recognizable because one of the clouds looks remarkably like Isabel's silhouette, which is really cool. Both cirrus and cirrocumulus clouds can often be spotted during the autumn, but only during random clear hours on days that typically have cloudy and rainy weather. For that reason, these are often considered the rarest special cloud types. Finally, billow clouds can often be spotted during the winter and once again only appear on clear or fine hours on days preceding poor weather conditions. So basically, like many other weather phenomena such as rainbows, it's pretty easy to miss these special clouds spawning, especially given they're all seasonal and more often than not, only appear an hour each time. So there we have it, that was 5 details you may not have known were a thing in Animal Crossing New Horizons, along with a few features that have been added since the launch of the game. But what do you think about these? Did you know them all already? And how often do you visit dream addresses? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Anyway, for now, that pretty much wraps up this video. If you're an Animal Crossing fan, don't forget to subscribe, as we're we'll uploading a bunch of New Horizons news as and when it happens. Until then, I'd like to give a special thank you to this channel's Patreon supporters, as well as this channel's members, you guys absolutely rock and truly help me upload as regularly as I do. I couldn't do it without you. Don't forget to head over to our Discord server too. And of course, if you made it to the end of the video, please comment Nook Phone just to let me know you did. That would be super awesome. And please be sure to include what kind of pattern you use for your Nook Phone case. I'd love to know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it entertaining. Please be sure to leave a like if you did. Thanks for watching. I hope you have an amazing day. Stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.